Hello there, guys, and welcome to my ghost trick, Phantom Detective Retrospective. This is, without exaggeration, probably the hardest retrospective I've ever had to do. Um, it is most certainly not something that, um, whenever I beat a game, there's always a lot of things that occur to me over the course of the game that I really want to talk about. Things that didn't work, lingering questions, you know, just things that bothered me. And with this game, there's almost nothing. The, the game is damn near perfect. You know, the soundtrack is amazing. The animation quality, for being a DS game, holy shit, because the only other DS game I've ever played was Radiant Historia, and Radiant Historia looked okay. Um, but you could tell it was a DS game. This one looked fantastic. I, I, you could have told me it was on the Vita, and I wouldn't have really balked an eye that much. The only, the only thing that really kind of gave it away is every once in a while you could see the pixelization, because the screen is so much smaller than, you know, obviously the computer screen is being displayed on. But, damn. It just, it looked so good. Characterization was so good, the writing was so good, the plot was really, really well kept together. The characters acted believable. I mean, just almost everything about this game was fantastic. It's, I can't call it the best game I've ever played, but I may, may well call it one of the most polished games I've ever played. It's right up there with Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, you know, Sui Coden 2. It's, I, at the end, I'm just left astounded how they, they just, they, they kept themselves very, very true to their vision. They kept it a sustainable um, broadness. You know, obviously Final Fantasy VI is a bigger game than Ghost Trick, but that's not bad. You know, it, 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 I would much, much, much rather play a game that keeps its scope under control than a game that tries to go like Dragon Age Inquisition on me. Don't get me wrong, I, I really liked Inquisition. I liked playing it. It was a lot of fun. But good lord, there was so much bloat in Inquisition. So many, you could have made Inquisition a majestic 15 hour game. And instead, it's, it feels like they put 15 amazing hours in, into a 60 hour game. So you end up with 45 hours that are, eh, okay. You know, and it's just like, I, I would, Ghost Trick didn't go fall for that. Ghost Trick didn't try and get, be like, no, we've gotta get 50 hours of content into this thing. No, man. They gave me... We were about 17 episodes long, each episode between 30 minutes and an hour, so I'd guess there was probably maybe 12 hours on there. Um, they gave me 12 great, thoroughly enjoyable hours, and, you know, I don't need to gorge. I... I the, the game was... It was appropriately paced. It didn't overstay its welcome. The story was compact. Oh, just everything is amazing. You know... It's, I, I think its strongest suits were, oh my god, I don't know who did the music for this, but they are one of my new favorite people. All, there was almost not a track there that I didn't like, and even the ones I didn't like, I respected. You know, a, a, a good example of that is just like the investigation theme, you know, uh, where it's just like, you know, and it's just like a very, very subtle background theme while the plot is happening. It did its job. It accompanied something, but it didn't distract from it. It didn't try and be like, hey, I'm the theme, you know? When the theme was on, it was on. And when the theme was not the focus, it got the hell to the background. And I really, really, really respect that about it. The, the music accompanied the game really, really well. I know I'm just rambling at this point, but it's just, it's, it's good. It's a fantastic game. It's, it's funny. You guys know I have a policy that I will never play a game unless I own a physical copy of it and could le legitimately play it. You know, in order to play Tales of Vesperia, I had to get a um, PlayStation 360 or PlayStation Xbox 360 and a copy of Tales of Vesperia. I would not play it any other way. You know, even when I emulate stuff like Star Ocean, um, I own a physical disc with Star Ocean on it. If you come by the stream and you want to see it, I will pull it out for you. So, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I emulate because it makes it easier for me to get the content to you at a high quality, but I don't believe in stealing games. And so, just like everything else, I have a 3DS and I have a copy of Ghost Trick, but <laughs> I kind of broke my own rule here. I like forgot to actually buy Ghost Trick until I was maybe three episodes in. I'm like, I don't own a physical copy of this crap. Um, and so I stopped real quick and went to order it, but instead of sending it to me, I bought a copy of it and sent it to my friend, Ivy, 
who is the person who was in like the Silent Hill and the Tales Principle Let's Play with me, and also, ironically enough, the one whose Xbox 360 I kind of stole. Um, so I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna buy this, but let me send it to someone else and let them enjoy this game. And I'm actually really, really frustrated because she can't find her charger. And I like don't want to say stop what you're doing, go find your charger, but I kind of want to be like stop what you're doing and plug, go find this charger. This game is amazing. Um, that said, there are two things about it that I think could be improved. And one of them is super, 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 super nitpicky. Uh, and I realize it is. So, go in, l let me just preface what I'm about to say with, this is not a big issue. This is not a problem. Um, uh, it's just something that I feel like, here's an optimal reveal is a reveal that explains a lingering plot point for me, all right? Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to figure out a good example that I could use. Um, you know, it's... The, the reveal about Cecil the Cat in this game came off very similar to Bruce Willis's reveal in The Sixth Sense. You know, it, it made sense when you saw it. There was a lot of things that, in retrospect, indicated it. But it still sort of, for, for the person playing it the first time, kind of came out of nowhere. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I think it, it's always stronger when there are scenes that don't make sense until the reveal. The reveal, it, it has to be carefully done, but the reveal has to make the game make better sense than it did before. The best example I can think of that is um, Dawn of the New World, and skip ahead about 30 seconds if you haven't played Dawn of the New World, because this is kind of a major spoiler. Um, but I, I, I'm going to phrase it in a way that doesn't... You know what? No, you probably don't need to stick your head, because I want to phrase it in a way that doesn't really spoil anything. Um, in Dawn of the New World, there is a scene, a scene that drove me up the wall, where one of your companions physically stops you from going out to save the person that up until now your job was to save. He had specifically asked you to go protect this person, but then all of a sudden, randomly, he, like, stops you from helping her because she got in over her head. And it makes no fucking sense why that's happening. And then later in the game, there's a reveal that happens that makes that scene make, become crystal clear, and for that, that is the ideal way to do a reveal for me. Because, you know, simply having enough supporting evidence to give credence to the theory when it comes out is okay i mean it in retrospect you're like oh that's what was going on okay that's kind of cool but whenever there's an ongoing nagging feeling you have of there's something not here there's something not right there's something there there's information i don't have and then the information comes and you're like ah ah yes that totally makes sense that's even better because the way it is for me at least the first time playing and maybe i'm alone on this one but when it came out that Cecil had been a cat the whole time, I was like, well, that kind of came out of nowhere. And then people pointed out all of the subtle hints they gave that that could be the case, and I'm like, well, those are things that make sense given the new information, but they didn't not make sense before. Um, you know, th there was nothing that was said that could not be the case if Cecil was a uh, Yomiel. And so, and that's why the reveal I feel like could have been handled slightly better, but like I said, that's super, super nitpicky. Um, as I just said, the, the sixth sense reveal style, where the whole, sto the whole story works, and then you find out the story has not been working the way you thought it was for the entire game, that also works perfectly well. You know, it's, it's the suboptimal way. I prefer it the other way, but I'm not going to say that the game is a bad game because it didn't handle it optimally. It's just, when, when I'm playing this game and I'm trying to talk intelligently about this game, I'm left with such little to pick at. I, mean, I can sit here and just talk about how great the game is and how much I love it, yay, but at the end of the day, that doesn't really mean anything. So, boy. Um, the only other thing, the only, uh, and this is slightly bigger, the only pseudo complaint I have, and maybe you guys can, like, clue me on this one too, because I have not, this is something I've, I've just been thinking about the game for myself. Um, what the hell was the deal with Beauty? Because they made a very specific point that Beauty could sense the paranormal. And whenever Cecil got too close to her, uh, Beauty would be like, I know you're there. If you come around again, I'm going to kill her. And it was, it was a very, very trepidatious moment. 
but nothing ever came of that. You know, after the last encounter you had where she said, if I sent you again, I'm killing the girl, Beauty was never seen in the game again. I, I really felt like she would play into the final encounter, and not only would we have to do stuff, but we would, you know, there, there was that whole thing about having to do stuff without letting Cecil, or we thought it was Cecil, without letting Yomiel see it. Um, that we, I thought there had to be something similar with Beauty, where we would have to make sure we never got in her physical proximity while during the final encounter or something. But no, it, it, they set this thing up that Beauty can sense the paranormal, and then they did nothing with it at all. Um, and that was really, 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 really odd. I'm also not entirely sure, because there was also the assassin that, and maybe I'm just misremembering something here, because this just occurred to me. Because obviously the first assassin that tried to kill Lin at the junkyard, we kind of got killed. Um, uh, like, Wrecking Crane Ball fell on him. But the second assassin, the one that broke into, um, Lin's apartment, we thwarted, and we caused, you know, we got both Missile and uh, Camilla underneath the bed, or underneath the sofa, so that he wouldn't find them, and then Lynn called and said she would be going to the chicken kitchen, and so he went off after her, but then he was never seen again. I, I don't ever remember that guy. You know, later we ran into the other two. We ran into um, Dandy and Beauty that had abducted... Um... <sighs> I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry. I just said her name, too. Um... Abducted the pink-haired girl, Jowd's daughter. I don't, I, I don't know why I'm suddenly blaming her name when I just freaking said it. But anyway, and so I, I, I'm like, what happened with the assassin exactly? We don't know. He's, he's always two steps ahead, but apparently not because Lynn just totally, she got sidetracked. Um, and I, I know she got sidetracked and arrested and had to escape. And so she didn't actually go to the chicken kitchen, but we don't really know what happened to that. We never, we never, I never, we saw the police guy looking at the chicken kitchen, but I don't ever remember seeing that particular assassin, two, two steps ahead, Luke or whatever his name was. I don't think it was Luke. I, I, I think I made that up. So, that's the only pseudo complaint I have is that they're, they're, almost all their characters were amazing, but a lot of their characters just seemed to fall out of the story with no real explanation. And I'm not, I may be forgetting what happened to two steps ahead, but I know for a fact that Beauty and Dandy just sort of like, they, they presumably went to the submarine because, is it Camilla? Um, was there, but then, I don't know. You know, we, we ourselves didn't actually see them, I don't think, although we saw some nameless grunts leave the submarine whenever they detached Jowd's chamber. But you know what? Oh well. <laughs> At the end of the day, these are very, very minor things for a very, very amazing game, and I am absolutely not saying that these are big problems. You know, go back and watch my Zestereo retrospective. There were things about that game that pissed me off. And I was very, very critical. This one, it's it, it's like eating a, you know, dessert that has a very slight aftertaste. And you're like, ah, oh, I wish it didn't have a very slight aftertaste. But at the end of the day, if, that, if that's the complaint you have, you don't have a complaint. This game is fantastic. It's easily the best game on the DS as far as I'm concerned. Granted, I have a sample size of two. But, oh my god, it's, it's, it's so good. Um, I'm so, I'm so glad that you guys got me to start this mystery queue. Um, needless to say, in four days we will be starting Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. Um, so the update schedule will be Star Ocean 3 every other day, with uh, Tales of Zillia and Ultra Despair Girls interspersed between. So, that's fantastic. Um, Cecil's amazing. I still am so happy I got to play as a cat the whole game. That's that's incredible. And the best thing is Cecil actually looks like my cats. If you've, you've seen the stream, like one of my cats looks at I, I seriously want to get a red handkerchief and just like tie it around his And he will spin like he'll just sit there and bat it and be like, get the thing off me! Because he's a cat, and that's what they do. But um Ah. Uh, like I said, it's 
I feel bad because it, whenever you do a retrospective, you can talk about what's good, but it is much, much more interesting and much, much more um, helpful to talk about what's bad. But the problem is what's bad with this game is such minutia. There, there's almost nothing worth talking about. It's it's so good, and but you can't just sit here for 15 minutes and be like, it's amazing, because it's just I mean that's it's boring, you know. You you want to have actual discussion points, and and it's incredible, and everyone should play this game, and yay is not much of a discussion point. It's a very very bold assertion, but not a discussion point. But anyway, uh, that's my retrospective. Thank you very much for being on this journey with me. Thank you very much to Ghost for basically badgering me until I played this game. Um, I don't know who Ghost is, but apparently his taste and my taste in games are almost identical. Because he has yet to make a bad suggestion. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's very, very much... Sometimes he states his opinion a little bit more strongly than I would like, but his opinions are almost always valid. Even if his arguments for them sometimes aren't. But yes, thank you, Ghost. And thank you everyone else that was here with me. If you haven't played the game and you're just catching this retrospective, hopefully I didn't spoil too terribly much, although I did kind of talk about a major point at the end. But yeah, if I had one thing to say to you is go out, play this game. Um, if you don't have a DS, then emulate it and just buy a copy of the game. Alright, I mean, I would prefer you play it on the DS like it was intended, but... It's a fantastic game. I'm not going to ask you to buy a DS for a single game, but at least support the developer is all I would say. Give these guys support because they make amazing things. See you guys.